Yeah. All right. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We are here on a Sunday, Sunday sports report. This is Super Bowl Sunday, and you are back with the Sunday sports report. This hasn't happened since, gosh, 2011 uh, with the live view here of Rob and James. James Boris, for the viewers that don't know, was also my roommate at Lynn University, one of my best friends at Lynn University. We roomed together for, I think, two years, and they were two great years. Me and him used to yell, scream, fight with each other, but we're still best friends even down the road. James, as always, it's great to see you again. How you been, James? Been pretty good, Rob. Uh, just finished a hectic week at work. We're transitioning systems, basically, so... Been a bit busy on my end, from QuickBooks to Microsoft Nav, but uh, ready for what should be an exciting Super Bowl. Yeah, James, I agree. It's going to be a good Super Bowl, and let's talk about that. My New England Patriots are back in the game for the ninth time in this Bill Belichick, Tom Brady, 20-year span, all right, that the Patriots have had this dominance uh, inside the NFL. We're going to rehash the game and talk about the game uh, go through every position, quarterback, uh, through kicker, and also at the end of that, we are going to give our predictions. And we may go different, we may go the same, time will tell at the end of the game. But James, let's start at this game. Uh, we'll recap a little bit quickly about a two, two or three minute recap on the NFC and the AFC championship games. Uh, AFC championship game, I was very excited about that. The Patriots came out and played uh, pretty well. Kansas City came back and uh, swung in the thick of things. And, of course, we know the heroics of Tom Brady at the end of the game and in overtime with the Patriots getting the ball. That was big for the Patriots. And I'd love to hear your opinion on that. Big for the Patriots to get the ball in that overtime. And we just seen Brady in that overtime showing why he is the best play ever to play the game. Just going right down the field and just the Patriots scoring nice and easy. That defense looked really tired uh, for Kansas City at the end of the game. They looked like they were just not into it in overtime. James, quickly, what did you think about that Patriot dominance at the end of the Kansas City-New England matchup? Well, whoever got the ball in overtime was going to win that game because the game started. The Patriots, they ran the ball well in their first two drives. They got a touchdown, and then Brady threw a pick in the end zone to Gronk. But after that, their running game didn't get going. In the first half, they pitched a shadow against Kansas City's defense. And outside of the one good play to Hill, the Chiefs' offense didn't do anything. But in the second half, and particularly in the fourth quarter, it was a different story. The Patriots could not stop Watkins. They couldn't get really get pressure on Mahomes. They did have four sacks. But again, that was in the first half of the game. Great. And the Chiefs scored 20-plus points in the fourth quarter. It came down to two things, an offside call on D Ford where had he been on sides, the game would have been over. Mm -hmm. And then it came down to the coin flip. You know, the, the Chiefs lost that game as soon as the coin flip Matt went in the New England Patriots direction because the Pats had had the ball for 40 minutes. And while they didn't have a lot of late, a lot of sustained drives late in this, until the fourth quarter in the but in the first two quarters, especially the first half, they had the ball for 12 minutes. And I think that just took a toll on the Chiefs' defense. And since the Chiefs couldn't run the ball with Kareem Hunt now gone after the domestic violence issue surfaced early in the year, it basically came down to who got the ball first was going to win. I think you'd agree with me that if the Chiefs would have got the ball first, they would have gone down the field and scored. But, I mean, to me, this is Brady's best work. I don't know about best football player of all time, Jerry Rice. Um Jim Brown, but definitely, uh, definitely the most clutch quarterback of his era. And other than maybe Montana, you can't really make an argument. But this was his finest work, I think, taking this team to the Super Bowl, considering in the issues they have at pass rusher outside of Flowers and at receiver, besides Edelman. I got to give Brady credit. They won right. a very good game. Well, James, uh, and I agree with you that uh, Mahomes played a hell of a game. I mean, he played great. He didn't look good in the first half. Second half, he, he, they, he really took strides. And I do agree with you. If Kansas City got the ball, they probably would have went downfield. But uh, I'll tell you what, that Kansas City uh, defense, uh, as I said earlier, did look gassed at the end of the game. But let's move on to the NFC. 
uh, game, which uh, as being a Cowboys fan, uh, we know you were really interested in, and we both thought the Saints were a Super Bowl team. They came out in that game scoring 13 straight points, lead, leading that game 13 to nothing. Any football fan seeing uh, New Orleans with the talent they had on that team, Drew Brees was looking good at the beginning of the game, and the second half he didn't look so good. That pick at the end of the game really looked bad. I, I was very surprised to see him throw that pick at the end. But I'll tell you what, James, New Orleans looked good, then I'll tell you what, uh, Goff looked really, really good, and C.J. Anderson, the big player in that game, to score that touchdown, I mean, he looked good at the end of that game, too. Uh, big win for, um, I almost called him St. Louis just now, but big win for Los Angeles. James, what, are you, what did you think about that game? I, I just seen a New Orleans team that looked like they were going to win, and they fell apart uh, at the end. I know that call... And we'll talk about that call. That was a big call in that game, and the referees did take the game, uh, I believe, out of the game, out of that. But New Orleans had so many chances in that game to win that game, and they did lose that game. And it wasn't just that call; they lost that game of being up 13 to nothing. Well, here's the thing, Rob. They they were up 13 nothing, but um, as you saw a little bit with the Eagles, although not quite in the second half. Um, after New Orleans scored their first 13 points, they were dominated, if you really think about it. I mean, they got 10 points. They had two quick drives where they scored. But after the turnover, they only got a field goal. They couldn't move the ball other than the one possession in the first part of the second half. And the reason is this. They don't have a second weapon in the passing game at receiver if you don't count Alvin Kamara opposite Michael Thomas. Remember, they tried to get Des Bryant. He tore his Achilles. They don't have a tight end. Benjamin Watson, who was drafted in the Patriots back in 03. I mean, he's basically done. He's 37. They don't have another receiver. So what I think the Rams did is they weren't going to let the running backs so of Kamara and Ingram beat them, and they were going to double-team Michael Thomas and dare anybody else on the Saints to be able to get the ball, and they couldn't do it. And while the Rams have a couple holes on defense, they got a great secondary, and they got three strong pass rushers. And the Rams, they if you look at it, Rob, outside of the first quarter, they dominated the last three quarters. I mean, really, all New Orleans had was the first drive in which they used the running backs, Kamara and Ingram. And other than that, after the first quarter, they got thoroughly outplayed. And while there was a call, that again, that did decide the game, there was also a big no call on a golf face mask that if right. that's called, that's probably a touchdown. And then that changes the game because then New Orleans can't settle for a field goal. They have to get a touchdown. And if there's time left on the clock, then the Rams will probably get a field goal and it still goes to overtime. But, I mean, in my opinion, the Rams and the Saints were the two best teams in the regular season. The Saints, They both went 13-3. and three. I mean, the Saints' last loss of the year really didn't count since they didn't play to win against Carolina. And then outside of the first game against Tampa where people are shaky – and the week, their only real loss was to Dallas. The Rams, they really rebounded. I mean, the Rams, I thought, looked like the most complete team in football throughout the entire postseason. But we'll. But I, I just thought it was a great game, and it was a shame it ended that way. Right. Well, but we, I, go ahead. I'm sorry. I thought they deserved to win overall after the first quarter. Yeah, I agree. We'll see what happens uh, now with the Super Bowl. Today, that we're doing this right now, right? 428 Eastern Time, Central Time, 328. Uh, so the game is only in two, two hours, and I'm getting really excited uh, for that 630 start time. But let's move on to the game, James. Obviously, I'm really excited. You don't really have a team in the game right now. Dallas did have a good year, I'll give you that. And I was hoping that there would be a heck of a uh, game if the, they played the Patriots in the Super Bowl, me and you going against each other. But uh, that didn't happen. But let's talk about the game today. Like I said, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to go through every position on the football field, even coaching. And we're going to talk about who we believe has the advantage on both positions, on, on both sides of the ball. Um, so let's get to it. Let's go with the, uh, the most important position besides coaching, I believe, on the field. We're going to talk quarterback. Now, this is Brady's ninth Super Bowl, James. I mean, he's got that experience. He's the best quarterback ever, in my opinion. You can disagree. Uh, we know you're a Brady hater. That's okay. We, we respect you still. Uh, the, and I think 
that uh, with the loss last year, that really hurt Brady and the Patriots. They, they came in here with a team that wasn't as talented as the team last year and came out and beat some pretty good teams. I mean, they lost to some, some teams that were shaky teams. The Dolphins they lost to in that fluke game. And a lot of people thought that after that game with that Dolphins, they lost back-to-back -back games. Uh, they thought that that team was done. I mean, you looked at some of the injuries the Patriots had during the season. Now they're fully healthy. Brady's fully healthy. He had a little bit of a knee scare this year with a knee injury. But he's back in action. And Brady looked so great in that Kansas City game. I can't, and I'm not trying to be just the biased Patriots fan. I'm telling you the truth. And James earlier said the same thing. I mean, Brady looked so good. He dismantled D. Ford and the rest of that defense in that second half and in, in going into overtime. I mean, they, he just looked like a man amongst men uh, in that game. I think that you got to look at between Brady and Goff. Goff had a great year this year. I think he had 28 touchdowns and seven picks. A uh, great year for a quarterback. And I think he's a great quarterback. He's on the rise. But you look at the talent of Tom Brady and the – and the, the, the mind that he's had and going to nine Super Bowls and that experience against Goff that he had a great year, but this is his first Super Bowl. We'll see what happens. Uh, and I, I just think that Brady, you got to give it a Brady over Goff. Unless you're real biased, you got to give it a Brady yeah. over Goff. I think, and to finish it off before I uh, pass the ball to James, uh, the pressure is the key. Uh, is, is, Aaron, is Donald going to get to um, Brady? Are the Patriots going to double-team Donald on that offensive line to make sure he doesn't get to Brady? But then what happens if Sue gets to Brady? So I think that the Rams, if they get to Brady, and we've seen Brady getting pressured, that rattles him sometimes a little bit. So I think if they can get to Brady, then I'll definitely give the edge to Goff. But I don't think so. I don't think that's going to happen. I definitely got to give the edge to Brady. James, what do you think? Well, I think there could be a chance that neither quarterback is pressured. If you look at last year's Super Bowl, neither quarterback was really pressured till that end of the drive, and Brady he got strip-sacked in that end of the game on Brandon Graham. And you look at the teams, and we'll get to the O-lines later, but it wouldn't shock me if we see this similar game this year when it comes to either neither team being able to get to the quarterback, and we'll get into that. But, yeah, Brady has been this his ninth Super Bowl. I think you have – I mean, he wasn't great early against Kansas City, but – in the fourth quarter and then over time, he made the plays when it mattered most. I, I do think we should point out that Chiefs defense was ranked 31st in the NFL. <laughs> and well, top tier defense. I, I mean, but look, he, it is a, it's impressive can, when you consider the fact that their offense is a lot more simplistic. And it's either Edelman, Gronkowski, or dump it off to James White. They really don't have a receiver on the outside. You say, oh, man, we got to worry about that guy. And I wonder if, if in this type of game against the Rams defense that's more complete than Kansas City, if that'll be a difference. But we'll get into that. But I think Goff deserves a lot of credit when you consider the fact he had to go to the Superdome. When you look at the teams that – stadiums where it's hard to win, Gillette Stadium, obviously up there with Brady, unless you're Baltimore, of course. But no one wins in Gillette other than Baltimore. Then you've got New Orleans, Seattle. I mean, those are the stadiums right there. Um, where it's just such a hard place to win. Remember, before that game, uh, Breeze and Payton were 5-0. and and They never lost, or 6-0, I should say. They never lost a playoff game in, uh, in uh, New Orleans in the Superdome. And for Goff to go in after the first couple series where they were outscored 13-0, he played calm. The only turnover he had hit Gurley right in the hands. He should have caught it. He didn't make any mistakes, I think. Because, again, the only, the only turnover was Gurley's fault, not Goff's. And against the Ram, a Saints defense that's number one against the run. And remember, they didn't get any running game going. Unlike the Cowboys game where they ran the ball, had two 100-yard rushers. They had ran the ball for less than 50 yards, 100 yards, actually under 75 yards. Less than three yards a carry. But it didn't matter because Goff was precise in the fourth quarter. He made the throws at the end of the second half and, and fourth quarter to get them to overtime. And he made the plays in overtime to get them the win. So I think while Brady has unquestionably got the experience factor, you got to give Goff some credit going up against that and improve Saints defense in their stadium. All right, James. So you, you agree with me, though, with Brady with the advantage there. Well, yeah. I mean, come on. All yeah. right. So then we're going to move on to the running backs. we got Todd Gurley and C.J. Anderson, but the Patriots have pretty much – 
two running backs and a fullback that they use a ton with uh, James White. Also, I mean, you could even put Cordell Patterson if you in there, even though he's a running back. They still give him the ball sometimes. We got Jimmy White, uh, uh, Sonny Michelle, and James Devlin. My opinion with this is you look at the two Rams running backs. If they're healthy, I say, heck yeah, the Rams running backs are way, way better than the Patriots running backs. But we don't know really how healthy Todd Gurley is. I'm giving a, 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 my surprise pick. Is to the Patriots. My advantage is with the Patriots. You look at James White and how he played throughout the year, and even if you go back two years ago, how he looked in that Super Bowl at, against Atlanta, he was phenomenal. I call him Big Game James, as your nickname, uh, James. Big Game James. I call Jim White Big Game James. I mean, Sonny Michelle has had a heck of a year. Me and you talked about that draft, and Sonny Michelle going in the first round, what? But then he comes out, and he's played really good uh, coming to the middle and the end of the year. I mean, he's played just as good as any running back in the league. And then you look at James Devlin. I mean, how big has he came up for the Patriots throughout the season? I mean, James Devlin has been great for the Patriots throughout the season. We'll see how God, Todd Gurley is and how healthy he is. But I, I'll tell you what, my pick is with the Patriots. I mean, you look at the experience factor, what we go back to, James White has been there. Sonny Michelle hasn't, but he's still played great this year. And Devlin's been there too. So I'm going with the Patriots, James. And this is C.J. Anderson's third team uh, in this year. So congratulations to him of how you know good he's played. But I'm telling you, I'm going with the Patriots as far as running. I think the, Ram, the Rams have the better rushing team. They got arguably the best running back in football. But is he healthy, James? That's the question. I think, well, I think he was actually benched for the turnover against the Saints. And you got to remember, Rob, New Orleans had the number one rushing defense in the NFL. So they didn't run the ball a lot. But you look at Gurley, he is probably the best overall running back this year ahead of Zeke and Barkley. You got C.J. Anderson. Remember, C.J. Anderson's won a Super Bowl, too. I know. He did with Definitely. Denver, that Denver team. So he has that experience there. He can run it too. That two-headed monster to me gives him the advantage over the uh, over the, the Patriots. Look, Michelle's a really good running back, and and I think he'll be a star if he can stay healthy. But you know, we'll, we'll see it. We'll see if he can. He's had knee injury issues, and he's also had fumbling issues this year. That's a big issue too for Michelle. He had fumbling issues at Georgia. He had a couple fumbles this year. He missed a couple games. If he can stay healthy, then. And James White, more of a more of a pass catcher than a running back, and I would say he's probably the third option after Gronk and Edelman, since they really don't have outside receivers they can rely on. But you got to give the edge to L.A. They ran for 100 yards. Two, their top two running backs did against uh, the the Cowboys, who had a top five rushing defense. Yeah, they didn't run the ball well against the Saints, but nobody has this year. And then on the and then you look at the Patriots' running game. They were great against the Chargers. Against the Chiefs, they had two good drives in the first quarter, but after that, they really struggled to move the ball. They got stuffed on a fourth and one. They missed multiple uh, third downs in the th second half against the Patriots, and they had to exclusively go to Brady in the fourth quarter. And, I mean, in my opinion, I would you have to give the edge to the Rams because not just because of Gurley's brilliance, but – with, you know, Michelle being a rookie and with Anderson being there, I think you got to give the edge to the Rams. Right. Well, James, we're going to move on to wide receiver now. Now, uh, I may, we may go the same here. We may go different. We'll see what happens. Wide receiver, well, we're looking at for the Patriots, uh, Julian Edelman, uh, Chris Hogan, and we're looking at also Cordell Patterson and Dorsett also. So four guys for the Patriots. Uh, Gronk, we're going with tight end. We're not going to say him, him as a wide receiver. Against Cooks and Woods, uh, pretty much, for the um, for the Rams. Now, Cooks used to be a Patriot. Remember, he played in the Super Bowl. He got knocked out last year in the second quarter after that catch yeah, with the concussion, uh, which was too bad. He could have helped the Patriots in that game. But anyway, we'll move on to today's game. I think that uh, the advantage goes definitely to the Rams here. I mean, they, you got... Uh, Cooks, who's uh, one of the top receivers in the game right now. Woods is a good receiver. But I think it's a slight advantage. And I'm going to tell you why, James, that it's not a big advantage for the Rams. You look at Julian Edelman. He has been clutch 
through for the Patriots the whole year. And in the playoffs, he's been tremendous. I mean, he played sensational for the Patriots in the playoffs against the Chiefs and the Chargers. So will you look at that. I mean, Julian Edelman, Chris Hogan had some big catches against Kansas City, too, and he's been big for the Patriots the whole year. And you look at Cordell Patterson and Dorsett, who haven't been really great this year. Patterson has made some good... You know, when Brady gets the ball, he hands it off to Patterson. They do that reverse. And sometimes Patterson in that reverse can catch you. Even though it's not a pass, it's still a big play for the Patriots sometimes. So I would go uh, with the Rams slightly, but not a huge advantage because of Edelman uh, making those big catches and also Hogan. Well, I think the, I think Woods is a lot better than Hogan. I mean, Edelman, there's no question that he's the most clutch player on offense. Right. Outside of Brady, he's their number for one target them losing Gordon hurt them because they really don't have a receiver on the outside that can stretch you I mean Hogan yeah he made a couple plays he also had a drop but he's been inconsistent pro football focus has him in the bottom I mean he's he's a barely a top 100 receiver really the only top receiver they rank if you don't count Gronk and a running back is Edelman who's in the top 25 you look at the Rams Cooks and Woods both had 1200 yards this year Cooks got hurt last year. Woods is a very solid receiver. Right. And also, the Rams losing Cooper Cup really hurt them to the torn ACL. But I do like Josh Reynolds. He had four catches for 74 yards against the Saints. He had 400 receiving yards as the number three option. And when you look at the Rams, I mean, they don't, even though they have Cooks as the number one and Woods as the number two, they don't overthrow to one guy. And as a result, that makes them difficult to defend because you just can't key on one guy. Agree. And we're going to move on to tight end now. I think we both are going to agree on this. Uh, Rob Gronkowski against Darrell Jer- Everett and Tyler Higby. I mean, you look at, we'll, we'll go to the Rams first. Uh, Higby and Everett, 57 uh, combined receptions for both of them for 612 yards in the regular season. I mean, Gronk had, he started off the season he was not as good as he used to was. Then he came back, and he was injured a little bit throughout the year, but he's came back, and he's played phenomenal the past two games against the Chargers with that huge game, against a big game also against Kansas City. Me and you, I mean, we don't even have to talk about this too much. I mean, it's this advantage goes to the Patriots easy. Gronk is way better, not even close to Higby or Everett. You agree, correct? Yeah, Gronk's, I mean, Gronk, over the stature, I don't know if he's the best tight end in the game anymore. I think maybe you could argue Kelsey or, right. or uh, the kid from Cisco, George Kittle. But I mean, yeah, he's the. I mean, he's an, he's a great player. I do think though this about Gerald Everett. He was ranked fourth by Pro Football Focus. He's a good run blocker. And if you look at the Patriots, they've traditionally had trouble at tight end, and they're not going to double team Everett. He may not be Gronkowski or or Kittle or. Uh, uh, the other guy, I mean, Kelsey, as I was saying, but he was ranked fourth by pro football focus, and if he gets a one-on-one matchup against a guy like Patrick Chan, who struggled in his career against tight ends, I could see Everett making an impact. And remember, while there's no question Gronk's the better tight end, he's going against up a really good cover safety in John Johnson from the, the L.A. Rams, who's ranked top six in the NFL and is the number one cover safety according to pro football focus this year. I mean, I th- even though Gronkowski, we'd both take him if he's healthy, and I think he's closer to being healthy than at any point this year. I don't, thi- I don't think Gronk will have quite the impact that, say, Edelman will have on this game, or even a Sonny Michelle, because I think the Rams have the personnel to defend Gronkowski. All right, James Lowe, I agree with you. So we both agree at tight end. We give it a grok. Now let's move on to the offensive lines. Now we look at the Patriots' offensive line with Dooney, Andrew, Shaq, Mason. A big guy that I'll, I'll tell you what, we both uh, talking in the offseason didn't think that he was going to have a big effect on this Patriots team With uh, was Trent Brown. I mean, he has been huge for the Patriots throughout the year, protecting Brady. And Marcus Cannon also have been pretty massive. Two big guys that have been playing tremendous for the Patriots. I have to give the, I think the uh, it's pretty even, but I'm going to give it to the Patriots. I mean, you look at the Rams, uh, Whitworth, uh, Salford, uh, Sullivan, and Blythe with uh, Havenstein at right tackle. I mean, that's a veteran group too, but I got to go with the Patriots. I mean, 
They have really protected Brady well. But I think, as you said, I could see this game uh, just as the same as last year's game with both offensive lines pretty good. And, the, uh, you know, b- both defense is not really getting to the quarterback. But I'm going to give it to the Patriots barely. You- I, think, I think it's a draw, actually, and here's why. I think the, the, the uh, Patriots have the better interior, but the Rams have the better tackles. You look at Whitworth, you could argue he's a Hall of Famer. He and Havistein are both top five tackles this year. Brown and, and uh, Cannon are outside the top 25 just barely. Now, Blith and Saffold are top 10 guards, but Mason's number one, slightly ahead of Zach Martin. Tui's number six, and Andrews is seventh. Sullivan's been a little inconsistent, but I think overall it's basically a push. I really don't think you can make – I don't really think you could say this all line's much better than that all line. I think you're splitting hairs. I just say I'd call it a draw. Yeah, same here. I said Patriots barely, but uh, you could say a push too. We're going to move to the D-line. I think we're both going to agree on this. I mean, the Patriots D-line has been pretty uh, pretty good as of late. I mean, they looked really good with those four sacks, as we talked about earlier in that Kansas City game. But you look at Trey Flowers, free agent at the end of the year, being their best uh, pass rusher this year. Lauren Guy is going to have to play well uh, and stuff with also a Malcolm Brown. They're going to have to stuff the run in this game. I think those guys are key for the Patriots' D-line. But we're going to go with the Rams. I mean, you look at Donald Sue uh, playing big impacts in this game. I mean, you look at uh, Michael Brock is also uh, shouldn't be treated as an afterthought. So I, I'm going to go uh, w- with the Rams with the advantage here. But the Patriots, for them to to win this game on defense, have to stop the run. And your man, Brown, Malcolm Brown from Texas, UT Hook'em, he's going to have to play big in this game and stop the run with Gurley. If Gurley's not hurt or C.J. Anderson, he has to play a big effect in this game to stop that run. Uh, but I'm going to give the advantage to the Rams. Go ahead, James. The advantage is the Rams. Donald's the defensive player of the year, 20 and a half sacks, which is crazy for an interior. Sue played his best two games in the playoffs, and he's playing for a big contract. Brockers is no slouch. And when you look at the Patriots, it's really one pass rusher, and that's Trey Flowers. Um, other than that, I mean, guys good against the run, but then other than that, they really don't have another D lineman that's a game changer. I mean, I mean – they, I mean, they haven't gotten help yet. Dietrich Weiss has been hurt and hasn't made the impact they want. Derek Rivers hasn't made the impact they wanted. Right. Really, really, what they have to do, Rob, is there is is that to compensate that other than Flowers, they have to bring in Hightower and Noiv off the edge or up the middle because they only have one guy that can get pressure. So they they're routinely having to bring their linebackers up because they don't generally get pressure with the front four other than Flowers. So you got to give the edge to the Rams, and it's a big edge. And that's going to put pressures on the safeties because they're going to have to move up too. Because if you pass the ball, it's going to leave that middle of the field wide open. Yeah, and now we get to what I think, Rob, is the game area where two teams are both weak, and that's at linebacker. Yes, you, go ahead. Go ahead, James. You can if you look at the linebacking core, it's the clear weakness of the Rams. They have two linebackers who are okay, but not stars. Corey Littleton and Ekubom. Fowler's been okay, but not a star. He's been hit or miss. Then you look at the Patriots. Hightower has had his worst year for the Patriots since he's been drafted. He's ranked 50th at linebacker. His grade is 61. He's never been a good cover linebacker, but he struggled a bit against the run. I think Van Noy's actually been a little better than him this year, although I don't think you'll see Van Noy as quite the level of linebacker Collins was when he was there, a high tower, Teddy Bruschi. Um, he's their best linebacker. But, again, I don't really think that's saying a lot compared to their defenses in the past. And I think the Rams, especially their weak spot at linebacker with uh, – with, uh, oh, man, I got, I'm trying to remember the – Barry safety. Littleton. Now, Littleton's been okay, but it's the one next to him who's Baron. just – Barron. He's been he's their big weak spot on their team. I think, I think it's a push, and – Unlike an offensive line where both teams are great, I think both linebacking cores are problematic. All right, so me and you, uh, uh, you would say it's a push. I think the Patriots get that um, edge because of the experience. Plus, I'll tell you what, BYU guy, Kyle Van Noy, as you said, he's been playing uh, tremendous this 
and, and this year. And he's been the highest, here's a, here's a trivia thing for you, highest graded linebacker during the playoffs has been Kyle Van Noyt. He's came up really big, especially in that Kansas City game. He played well. I think Hightower, as, as, I, as you said, he hasn't had the greatest year, but he's going to come up big in this game too, both of those guys, because as you said, they're going to have to send those guys up to pressure the quarterback and make sure also they're going to be a run-stopping guys too. We've seen Van Noy come uh, up to the line and also stop the run a lot too when they get in between the tackles. We're also going to look for the Patriots to see how Roberts is going to do. Is he going to play well? Is Simon, they're also their second string guy, come in? He's going to provide some depth, too. So uh, Roberts has played good in some games. It's bad in some games. We're going to see how he plays in Simon. Now, you know what you're going to get with Littleton. He's a Pro Bowl guy in his first season as a starter. We're going to see what happens with Barron, who hasn't played really well at all as of late. So I think that uh, Fowler Jr. too, remember, he got that interception against Breeze. So we're going to see what happens with him, if he's going to put pressure on the edge. Uh, I know he's not a linebacker, but is he going to put pressure on the edge? That was a big pickup. Remember, Gator guy, uh, who was who former Patriot guy. Uh, so, what's, so we'll see what happens with that. I give the uh, edge to the Patriots in that aspect just because of the experience. But now we're going to go to corners. This is where I think that me and you may differ. Gilmore has proven uh, that he's a great quarterback. I, I'm the cornerback, rather. I mean, he's came out. He's the highest paid cornerback, uh, one of the highest in the league. He's a top five corner, cornerback. He was ranked first on pro football for focus. So I think that he's a huge guy. Harmon, I mean, he's a guy that's hit him. He's a safety. He's a safety. Yeah, Harmon. I'm, yeah, but I'm saying for Harmon, I think that he needs to play better, even as a safety. But I think that Gilmore is great. We're going to see what happens with uh, Jason McCourty. Now, Jason McCourty, who had 31, he's a guy that he's played good some games. He hasn't played good other games. So, I mean, J.C. Jackson is the guy to watch out for, I think, in the quarterbacks for the Patriots. I mean, he's a rookie. He was an undrafted guy. They just picked him up. He played good in the past couple games. And we're going to see how much that he uh, fits up. Now, he came up against Kelsey in the last game. He played him pretty well. So we're going to see what happens with that. Uh, as the Rams, uh, I mean, we know how the depth that they have with uh, Tlaib, former Patriot. Uh, he's been vital. Uh, Marcus Peters hasn't been as good as he used to be. So we're going to see what happens. And then Robbie Coleman, who made that big penalty that wasn't called in the Saints game, has played pretty good. Uh, now, I think I'm giving the, the it, it could be a push, but I'm giving it to the Patriots. Maybe you can call me biased, whatever, but I'm giving it to the Patriots. You look at Gilmore, you look at McCourty, I mean, who has played good, and that J.C. Jackson kid, the kid that's undrafted, he played really good in the Chiefs game. So I think it's a push, but I'm going to give it to the Patriots. I think it's opposite in terms of corner safeties. I'd give the Patriots a slight edge because I think Gilmore has been okay. is slightly better than Talib. Talib's their best corner. He's played well, not quite the level of Gilmore. Peters is actually a funny story. If you look at the first nine games, he was absolutely awful. Had a rating quarterback cornerback rating of 40 and gave up a pass rating of 145. In the last seven games, though, he gave up a, his quarterback rating. Uh, against and pass rating against Peters is actually 45, so it's dropped 100 points in the second half of the year. They played him in zone instead of man to man. Uh, also, Nickel Robbie Coleman's top six, although statistically Brady's done good against him, but struggled against Talib. I'd give the slight edge to the Patriots, but I think it's real close, and I think a lot's going to depend on how good the number two corners to uh, Peters and and. Uh, McCourty playing this game. If Peters plays like he does in the second half of the year, I think then it's basically a, a toss-up. Remember, I think they're going to put Tlaib on Gronkowski, and I think they're going to try to double-team. I think if they're going to put Peters on somebody, I don't think it'll be on Edelman or Gronk. I think they'll probably do it against, uh, say, a Chris Hogan or a uh, or a Patterson or a, or a Dorsett. I don't think he'll shadow Gronk or Edelman. All right, James, so we're going to move on to the safeties where I think the, the edge is a little bit more clear. I mean, we've seen the Patriots' safeties 
uh, with McCourty, Harmon, and Chung. I mean, Chung, Chung and I think McCourty sometimes has lost a step. Uh, I mean, then they haven't been as great as they used to be. Harmon has been good on and off in games, but I'm going to give this edge to the Rams. I think Chung, Chung lining up in the slot, we're going to see what happens. He is a physical guy, but he has, I believe, lost a step. Um, Chahaman can kind of move around. He's a good, so strong and free safety. We're going to see what happens with McCourty. I mean, he's reliable, but he has lost a spot. And this even talks about maybe McCourty retiring. So we're going to see what happens. I mean, you look at the Rams and you look at the guys with Lamont Joyner and you also look at um, that, that with, uh, with Johnson, who's uh, been who intercepted that pass with Breeze. Uh, before overtime, I mean, I think that this is pretty uh, safe that you give it to the Rams, as you kind of said earlier on in the quarterback conversation. I got to, excuse me, give the edge to the Rams. Yeah, John Johnson's top six safety, Joiners in the top 20. Um, I would say McCourty's still playing well, but not playing okay above average, but not quite at the elite level he has in the last couple of years. Yes. I think you agree with that. Patrick Chun never been a good cover safety. I don't know if that'll hurt him in this game. Will hurt them in this game, but if he, they're not going to get, they're not going to double Everett. They're going to leave him one on one, and we'll see how Everett does. But right. Chun's a little bit of a liability back there in pass coverage. Although I, I don't, he's not a bum, but he's not at the level of Johnson. So I think you got to give the edge to the Rams. That's a pretty clear edge too. I so agree. I think. I think you go there, and now let's get to kicker. I think it's basically a draw. You look at Zerline, he's hitting 87% of his field goals in the playoffs, 84% on the year. Gostowski's basically at the same rate. Uh, I think it's a push. Yeah, I agree with that. I'll tell you what, um, though, uh, Zer Zerline, the kicker for the Rams, he really looked good. I mean, that 57 yarder to win the game against the Saints, I mean, he looks like he could hit that from 60, 70 yards away. Uh, the way he kicked that ball. So I was pretty, and now that is indoors. Now tonight we'll be indoors too, uh, in, a, in hot Atlanta, Atlanta. Um, so, I mean, I don't think that's going to make a difference. Uh, I do worry about Goskowski sometimes. Yeah, he's been there from 2006. He does have that experience of being in multiple Super Bowls with some wins. Uh, and he's made 523 consecutive extra points as a record. But he has missed field goals in the Super Bowl. And he has missed field goals in big games. I know he's pretty reliable, but he's, he's, and he only missed two field goals under uh, 50 yards in the regular season. I do worry about him sometimes, though. Uh, he has missed a couple extra points in some big games in the past years that the Patriots um, have uh, won and lost both those games. But I think as far Denver as... Denver in the AFC title the Denver game. Denver in the AFC title game. That would have put them for, uh, to win that game if they... It would not have taken them to overtime. It would have taken them to okay, overtime. overtime, right. And Gronk, that was, I think that was the game that Gronk, they threw the ball up and Gronk missed the catch. Uh, it was deflected and Denver yeah, stopped from 20 to 18. It would have gone to overtime. but right. And then against the Falcons, he missed an extra point too. Right. If you remember that. So, I mean... Yeah, it, uh, to me, you've got kickers even, safeties edge to the Rams, corners, pats, linebackers maybe slide edge to the pats, Rams D-line edge, O-line toss-up, tight end pats, quarterback pats, running back and receiver, Rams. I think, and then we get to coaching. I think Bel head coaching advantage, Patriots, obviously from what Bill Belichick has done, but if you go by defensive coordinator, and uh, I think you would give the edge to the Rams with Wade Phillips over uh, Brian Flores. And then former I think on cow offense. Girl, former cowgirl head coach. He's not a good head coach, but he's a great D coordinator. Remember, he was the architect of that that Super Bowl win for the Broncos over the Pats. But he was a former cowboy head coach is what I mean. I know. He's not a great head coach, but he's a good D coordinator. Remember, he held the Cowboys in the. Saints, two explosive offenses to 22 and 23 points. I think you would say the Patriots' offense is pretty similar. I mean, I know they have Brady, but they really don't have as many weapons at receiver as, as the Cowboys do, and they don't have quite the level of, of running backs the Saints do right. at that level. So I would say I think Wade Phillips – I don't think they'll hold them to 10, but I don't think the Brady Patriots are going to score 38-40 like they did against the Chiefs. All right, so let me tell you, too, I do agree with the coaching uh, assessment that you just said. I do agree that Belichick, 
who is the defensive mind, too, so you could say he's partially a defensive coordinator along with the head coach because he does run that defense along with Robert Flores, who is going to be the new Miami Dolphins head coach. But I'll tell you what, though, uh, uh, the Belichick, you got to give him the, uh, the edge, not even close. I mean, McVay is, is a good coach, and, you know, I wish him luck uh, in his endeavors. I don't wish him luck, luck tonight, but I do wish him luck next year. <laughs> but I do think that Belichick overall is the is wins the coaching. He's been to nine Super Bowls, actually more than that, because he was uh, also at Super Bowls when he's with the Giants with Parcells as the defensive coordinator. So I think he's been to about um, eleven or twelve Super Bowls. Well, because he went in the nineties when they played the Packers too. Right, that's true. So he's been to quite a, a few Super Bowls. I mean, that experience does, and the defensive, uh, he's going to be running the defense, like I said, along with Flores, and McDaniels obviously runs the offense, so I give the Patriots' whole coaching staff uh, the edge over the Rams. I think you look at Belichick, Mc, uh, um, McDaniels, and Flores, along with Belichick running that defense, and i got to give it um, the edge to the Patriots. Now we're going to talk about our picks, and Let's analyze this a little bit, but not too much because we kind of went through the game a little bit. Um, you know where I'm going with this. I'm picking the Patriots. I'm going to say that Brady is going to get that number six tonight, as along with MJ, Michael Jordan in basketball. And he is the best quarterback, the best player in the NFL to ever play the game, the mind, the body, and the soul. The guy is a legend. I predict that Tom Brady will win Super Bowl MVP. The Patriots will win this game because they have the coaching advantage. They have the quarterback advantage. They even have good running backs, wide receivers. They might not have the best player at, the, at that position, but, the, at the, but they do have great players at every position. And I think that Bill Belichick always finds a way to win the game. I mean, you look at even without star players, he picks up these guys that are rookies, undrafted players, and he makes them into real good players. So I think that with that, I think that the Patriots will win this game. And that's why I believe that the Patriots will be Super Bowl champions. I think that the game will be 28 to 17 Patriots win. What do you think, James? I think 17 is way too low for the <laughs> Rams. I mean, remember last year they gave up 40. I mean, I don't I mean, I could see Brady getting 28 points, but I could also see the Patriots giving up 30 plus points. I mean, they gave up 38 points to the Chiefs in 20 minutes. And that defense was only in the field for 20 minutes. Remember, the Chiefs didn't have the running game of Anderson and Gurley like the Rams do. I think you look at Ram, I think when you look at this game, there's no question. I know about Brady, best player of all time. I mean, Jim Brown, I mean, Walter Payton, Jerry Rice. Now, if he wins this Super Bowl, then yeah, best quarterback ever lived, taking this team to the Super Bowl. But I just think when you look at the Rams, they really don't have a major weakness. I mean, if you're saying the worst thing they have is they're missed, they have an undersized inside linebacker in Mark Barron and an older center, I think you got to go with the Rams. And the reason I say that is this. They run the ball well. They throw the ball, they ball well. They rush the passer well. When they have Tlaib healthy like he is now, they're top five against the pass. The only big weakness they had in this year was against the run. But in the two games against the Saints and the Cowboys, against the Cowboys, they held them, Zeke, to under three yards rushing against Kamar and Ingram. They held them under four yards a carry. If they, if New England, against um, even against a cheap team like the Chiefs, whose defense isn't as good as the Rams, they only ran the ball outside of those first two drives. They ran for less than four yards a carry, 3.9. I think you got to go with the Rams in this. Look, Brady's an all-time great. Maybe will probably be the best ever, regardless if he wins or loses this game. I don't think it really impacts his legacy, it, even if he loses. I think they're going to lose, though, because of the defense. When you look at the Patriots' defense, if they can't get pressure on the quarterback, and with that Rams all-line, the Rams have too many weapons, and when you look at the Patriots, it's either Gronk, Edelman, or the running back. You've got two running backs to one and a half in the pay in favor of the Rams. You've got multiple receivers compared to one, and while Gronkowski's really good, the, his advantage, I think, is nullified by the fact that he's not quite what he used to be, and they have safeties who can cover him. But again, 
I, I think it'll be a close game. I'm going with 31-28 L.A. I don't think – I think the Rams – will win this game. I don't think there's a – if you look at the Patriots and the Super Bowls recently, they've been giving up a lot of yards and points, 40 to um, Philadelphia. And remember, that was to Nick Foles, not Carson Wentz. They gave up 31 to Mahomes. And remember, that was with only – the Patriots defense was only on the field for 20 minutes that game, and they were torched in the third and fourth quarter Agreed. of that game. And now you've got the Rams who, who have a two-headed monster – and they've got multiple receivers, and they've got a tight end. And McVay's an unpredictable guy. He will make some. Uh, he'll do some sweeps, some reverses, some trick plays. I think that the overall skill, the overall talent level of the Rams is enough to overcome the experience and coaching and quarterback factor that the Patriots have. I last two Super Bowls, I had the Patriots winning against the one against Philly originally, although that was because of Wentz. And I thought they would kill the Falcons. And they almost got blown out but ended up winning. But this game, I think this game is a true pick em game like the Seattle game. I don't think this is a double-digit game. I know the Patriots are favored by two points. I think it's basically a pick em, although I think that's basically on the experience factor with Brady and Belichick. I think if the talent level, if the talent levels play out and there's not a big turnover differential and it just comes down to the talent, and there's not, and then you got to go with the Rams. So I'm taking the Rams to win. All right. Uh, MVP James Quick. I'm going to go Gurley. I think I don't think it'll be Goff. I think it'll be Gurley. I think the problem is the Rams, the Patriots are not equipped. And remember, Gurley, if he's healthy, is a great running back in the run game and in the, in the pass catching game. And the Patriots really don't have a linebacker that can cover a tight end or running back now. I think pay. I think Brady throws three touchdowns. Uh, Tom Brady MVP of this game uh, and gets that sixth championship tonight. Let's hope so. As uh, Patriot fans all over the world, uh, will we will hopefully will we be rejoicing? A uh, sixth championship in nine tries. Uh, so James, that's our last word. Uh, any last words for? Uh, uh, for on our Super Bowl show for the well, Saturday, Sunday sports report. Well, we can. We want to go into some other stuff, or do you well, want to? We're gonna go. This is gonna be the end of our Super Bowl show. Uh, so, any last words on the Super Bowl? Dave? I think no. I, I think it'll be a great game, a uh, great game. But uh, we'll see what happens. I think if I think it's gonna come down. It's just gonna come down to can either team get pressure on the quarterback. I actually everybody talks about Brady Goff, the weapons. I think it comes down to does either O line create pressure in the running game, give up pressure in the running game or passing game. If both all lines play well, I think you give the then I think it's going to be like a it's going to be like last year's game with Philly and New England where neither team could get pressure on the quarterback until the end. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so, so if that happens, then might it might be like last year's game. Yeah, I agree with that James. I think uh, my last words on the Super Bowl is that I believe that the um, the Patriots have to run the ball well, and but I think that they have to make sure that they Brady doesn't get that pressure against him. I agree with you as far as the offensive line goes. That Patriots offensive line is really good. It has to stay together and play well tonight. And if they do, if that offensive line plays well, I think that the Patriots will win this game. I see Brady uh, doing really well and picking apart that defense. Uh, I know it's a good corner set, but it's not as good as it, it as the as it used you know it could be. And I think that Brady will pick apart that uh, corners. Uh, that's my last word on the Super Bowl. James has got the Patriots. I got the uh, I mean James has got the Rams. I got the Patriots as usual. Uh, we hope that you enjoyed listening to our Super Bowl Sunday fr uh, Friday sports report on a Sunday. Uh, James, thanks for coming on as always. You're uh, yeah. kind of knowledge uh, with the fo uh, with football and all sports in general, and we appreciate you uh, coming back and doing the Super Bowl uh, show with us here on the Saturday. I mean Friday sports report on a Sunday. So yeah. we'll take a break, and we will move on to the regular program.